Destroy the Sith we must, but apparently not together. Greetings, Acolytes of the Force, and welcome back to the Archives. In Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Yoda traversed the Jedi Temple in search of what had happened there. They were forced to step over piles of dead Jedi bodies, even those of younglings, all killed by either clone or lightsaber. Upon reviewing the security tapes, Obi-Wan learns the truth of what had actually happened here. The boy he had trained since childhood had embraced the dark side and brought ruin upon the entire Jedi Order as they knew it, and all at the behest of the mysterious Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Sidious. There was only one thing left to do for these two Jedi Masters, fulfill their duty and destroy the Sith at all costs. Obi-Wan is apprehensive and begs Yoda to send him after the Emperor instead. But the Grand Master simply tells him that Obi-Wan is not strong enough to face him and that Obi-Wan must confront his brother. But wait, why is this the only option here? Why did Yoda say that Obi-Wan wasn't strong enough instead of them going after Sidious together as a team? Their splitting up and trying to divide and conquer instead of going after the Dark Lord is one of the likely decisions that cost them the galaxy. The question we desire to answer today though is why did Yoda refuse to team up with Obi-Wan in order to take down Sidious? And if they had gone together, what would have happened? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's open up another holocron and get into it. There are in fact three major reasons why the Jedi decided to divide and take on each Sith Lord one on one. The first thing that we have to acknowledge is that the Emperor had moved very quickly, so quickly in fact, that it made the galaxy and the Jedi's head spin. For so long, the Sith had remained in the shadows, not making many moves at all, and certainly biding their time. But suddenly, in the span of a single evening, the plans of the Sith came to fruition, and the entire Jedi Order was obliterated. Order 66 had happened in a single blitzkrieg. While Obi-Wan's ears were still ringing from the cannon fire shot at him at Utapau, Jedi from across the galaxy were falling in heaps. At this exact same moment, Anakin had carried out Operation Nightfall, and not even the Jedi Temple was a safe haven any longer. Yoda had felt this moment in a colossal wave of a disturbance in the Force, the likes of which he had likely never once felt in his 878 years of existence. In an instant, the very balance of the Force had been tipped so dramatically that the dark side was now covering the entire galaxy, covering it in one large shadow, a shadow that indicated the end of the Jedi. It was now up to the few Jedi that remained in Obi-Wan and Yoda to finish what had been started thousands of years before and destroy the Sith. Unfortunately though, there was no longer time to forge the perfect plot. There was no backup plan. There was no one coming to the rescue of them. No more reinforcements. No ace in the hole. And as far as the two Jedi were concerned, almost no hope. Their only course of action was to respond as quickly as the Sith had acted, which meant taking out two Dark Lords in one fell swoop, a response to the immediate action taken by Sidious. They could not possibly risk the chance that if they engaged Sidious and he recalled Vader back to Coruscant that the two of them would be caught between the two most powerful men in the known galaxy. Yoda and Obi-Wan had a much better chance at taking the two of them separately rather than having to deal with Sidious and Vader united. Those two Sith Lords fighting as one would be far too much for anyone to deal with, even if it was the Grand Master and Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. At this point in time, the dark side was far too prevalent in the galaxy, meaning that Vader and Sidious would basically be feeding off of each other's darkness the entire time growing even more powerful with each passing moment in each stroke of the blade. While Yoda and Obi-Wan on the other hand would be slowly worn down by their oppressively powerful opponents. Not to mention, Sidious would likely use Obi-Wan's connection to Anakin to his advantage by perhaps attacking Kenobi while he was trying to reason with his former apprentice. And at the same time, while Obi-Wan was hurling insults at Anakin and shaming him for his decision, the Emperor would be reinforcing his turn to the dark side, strengthening the Chosen One and weakening Kenobi. Yoda was already having to deal with the most powerful opponent he had ever fought before, and he didn't need to be splitting his attention while worrying about Obi-Wan. Which brings us to the next reason. Reason number two is revealed to us in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, and it has to do with the sheer power of Sidious. After Obi-Wan finishes looking at the security tapes, he and Yoda have a very brief but a very important discussion before going off on their assignments to kill the Sith. The following reads, Now Obi-Wan did turn to face Yoda. Palpatine faced Mace, and Aegon, and Kit, and Seisei. 
four of the greatest swordsmen in our order, perhaps of all of the Jedi Order, by himself. Even both of us together wouldn't have a chance against Sidious. True, Yoda said, but both of us apart, a chance we may create. This moment is highly important because even Kenobi acknowledged that Sidious was far too powerful for the two of them together. The reason for this is most likely that Kenobi and Yoda would just get in each other's way while fighting the Dark Lord, who would have this as an advantage. Clearly, Obi-Wan was terrified of Sidious' saber skill considering how the Sith Lord dispatched those four Jedi Masters. Jedi Masters, who Kenobi references as being the finest duelist their order has produced. And Yoda even agrees with him. Sidious has shown on many occasions that he is extremely proficient against multiple opponents, even using this to his advantage when dueling the Jedi within his office. Yoda was likely the only one that could match Sidious saber to saber, but he had to do so without any other their distraction, requiring all of his attention. Having said this, eventually Sidious would have swatted Obi-Wan away like a wasp and killed him, therefore tipping the scales back in favor against Yoda. But Yoda makes an interesting statement about their chances of dividing and fighting the Sith Lords apart. Yoda says that they might be able to create a chance. He, of course, as he always does, is speaking cryptically about the future, but that is unlikely seeing as how he says that he failed at the end of his duel with Sidious. What Yoda probably thought would happen is that Obi-Wan would likely defeat Anakin, which would render Sidious too distracted to fight properly. Perhaps Yoda was banking on the chance that Sidious may flee or surrender if he learned that his powerful apprentice had lost. The evidence for this line of thought comes from what Yoda says when he challenged challenges Sidious at the very beginning of their duel. Faith in your new apprentice, misplaced may be. I believe that Yoda assumed that Obi-Wan would be able to defeat Anakin and do so while Yoda was actually dueling Sidious, meaning this could create an opportunity for Yoda to disarm Sidious or maybe even defeat him in a moment of shock. And now of course, our final reason. The reason of preservation. At the moment, Obi-Wan and Yoda were faced with the dilemma of the fact that they were hopelessly surrounded on all sides. They didn't know who to trust as friend or enemy, and as far as they knew, they were likely the last two Jedi alive in the entire galaxy. There was absolutely no chance of them running the risk of Palpatine wiping out two Jedi at once. The problem was, they knew that if they did fail, they needed at least one of them to be left alive to carry on the legacy of the Jedi in secret. There would have come a day when a new Jedi Order would be risen, and it would need the guiding hand of an experienced Jedi Master. Yoda and Kenobi probably had the exact same idea on this, and didn't want both of them to be caught in the same place, risking the entire existence of the Jedi to their knowledge. This line of reasoning can also be traced to how they chose to be exiled. They may have been stronger if they remained together in exile, but rather they split up so as to not have their combined energy in the Force create a beacon of light to be sensed by the Sith. And that, my friends, is why Obi-Wan and Yoda did not face Sidious together. But what are your thoughts on this? And what are your thoughts on the reasons that we propose? What do you think would have happened if the Grand Master and Kenobi faced down the Emperor as one? As always, Acolytes, thank you for visiting our archives. And if you haven't yet, reach out with the Force and crush that subscribe button. It is your destiny.